How's it going, everybody? Ben from Budget Pokemon here. Protecting my Pokemon cards. Now, that is a topic that I think about nearly every day. And if you're anything like me, you probably have a decent-sized collection yourself. Or maybe you're just getting started. Either way, in this video, I want to show you how I protect my Pokemon cards. And I think a good starting point would be the binder. So let me just clear all of this off, and then we'll go on to the binder. And here we are with the binder. Now I use this Ultra Pro Pro Binder as my trade binder mainly for my main binder, which has most of my, my valuable cards and cards that are very near and dear to my heart indeed. I use this Precious Collector Box Binder, although I wouldn't recommend this for a few things. First of all, it's way too expensive, obviously. The, the second one is, if I can just zoom in with the camera right here, it's actually very tight. The pockets of this binder are very tight. The cards fit in just. I double sleeve all my cards, so this is probably the reason why. But as you can see, there's very little room, so I wouldn't recommend it for, for that reason. Because as you can see here with the Ultra Pro binder, if I just... There is just so much more room between the cards over here. And this is why I would recommend one of these. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same one, but after all, this is a video about what I use to protect my cards, so there you go. So, the binder then. In my opinion, the perfect item to not just store your cards, but to also display them. Because there is nothing quite as satisfying as just flipping through the pages and looking at all your beautiful, beautiful Pokemon cards. Now, if you want to buy a binder, there's a few things that you should look out for. First of all, you should buy a binder which has acid-free pockets. Uh, Ultra Pro originally does have it. Most of them have it, but you should look out for them. Otherwise, that could potentially damage your cards, or this will not be as clear after a while. So look out for that. The other thing to look out for is to have side-loading pockets. So if I just take this card right here, I put it in just like this. And if I were to carry around my binder, since this is a trading binder, I usually, I can carry it around like this. They're not gonna fall out, even if I shake them like this. So this is really secure. Now there are also binders which also have a, a little zipper right here, so you can just completely shut them. These are also really, really good. And of course, there is multiple sizes. This is a so-called 9-pocket binder. There are also 12-pocket binders, which basically just imagine another pocket right here. So you have like 4 in a row and 12 on, on a single page. Use either one. Most important part is, of course, once again, that the pockets are acid-free and they're side-loading. Now, one thing that I prefer is the binders that have this black material, which the pockets are attached to. Because I have an... An older binder right here, a collector item. I do believe this is from Dragon Shield, although I might be wrong. As you can see here, um, this doesn't have the black backing, and the binder itself is in really bad shape. You can see all of this is bending and everything, and this might be because this is not acid-free. Also, these ones are so-called top-loading sleeves. So, all in all, this binder would be a terrible choice, in my opinion. Now, there is also a few other different binders that you should avoid. You should avoid ring binders at all. In my opinion, they are not a great way to store your collection. A binder like this doesn't, once again, doesn't have to be the specific one. A binder like this is way better for storing your cards in a ring binder. Now, if you do want to go for a ring binder, nonetheless, make sure it is a D-ring binder. And make sure you use proper sleeve pages, like the ones from Ultra Pro or any reputable company. Now, another thing that I want to mention are also these so-called top loader binders, which essentially are just a normal binder, but instead of putting your cards in a sleeve and then in this page, you put your cards in a top loader and then you put them in the binder. I personally haven't used them and I probably wouldn't. I just like my cards as they are like this, but I think I'd mention them and a lot of people swear by them. So there you go. Now, you could have the best binder in the world. If you're not going to sleeve your cards, you're probably going to end up damaging them at some point. So, here's a selection of sleeves that I personally use. So, let's start off with these ones from Ultra Pro. These are the so-called penny sleeves. You'll hear and see them mentioned everywhere. What they are is they're basically like pretty big sleeves. And they're also, well, first of all, they're really cheap. That's why they're called penny sleeves. Um, one thing to note, these are also acid-free. That's something I've mentioned in my in the binder section of this video. 
Um, one thing to note, really, really important to buy acid-free sleeves, but most of them from reputable sellers are acid-free. So here we have a, a Ultra Pro sleeve. Doesn't look different from any other sleeve, like a perfect fit one, but once I put this Deidene in right here, you can see the card actually has a lot of space in the sleeve itself. There's a lot of space up here and there's also space all the way around the card. And this is really important. If you do want to grade your cards at some point, I highly suggest storing them in a penny sleeve and then using either a top loader, although if you send them into PSA, you should be using a card saver. Also CGC, I think they also um, require you to send your cards in card savers. So um, when I ship my cards, I usually use top loaders, but when I send them in for grading, I usually grab these card savers. Now, as I've mentioned, there's two different ways. You either use a, a top loader or you use a card saver. I've also attached index stickers or whatever they're called to both of the backs of these, these sleeves. So that way they can be easily removed from from either, either thing, either top loader or card saver. And that makes it very easy. Now, moving it on to the next sleeves, there is, of course, these perfect fit sleeves from KMC. And then also from KMC, there are these Carperia Hyper Mats. I like to use these in combination, of course, as I've said, I double sleeve all my cards and I'll either use a KMC Perfect for once in the case of my trade binder, because I have to remove the cards quickly and it's just better to show them off. And for my personal collection, I actually use these ones, these Dragon Shield sealable Perfect Sleeves. These are very, very nice, you're gonna see here in a second, but first of all, the main part about these perfect fit sleeves is, in my case, I have a really good feeling if I double sleeve my my cards. For me, that just gives it that extra layer of protection. So once again, it's very easy. As you can see, this one, because it's called perfect fit, the card has no wiggle room at all in this sleeve. So that means it stays very secure. You just take any outer sleeve. Doesn't necessarily have to be KMC. I also have these these Dragon Shield ones, and they're actually a little bit different from the from the KMCs. Um, these are the KMCs, these are the Dragon Shields. If I hold them side by side, you might be able to tell that the Dragon Shields are just a tiny, tiny bit taller. And, well, basically, it's either choice. If you really want to, Dragon Shield is a really reputable um, sleeve maker and binder maker. Like, these are very good. This is just what I personally use, KMC all the way and then as I said you just put the card in like so and what I like to do I don't like to push on this edge right here because that would put in my opinion way too much stress in the card and for these perfect fits if the um, sleeve isn't broken in yet you might actually push out the card at the bottom so what I like to do is I like to take the outer sleeves you need fingernails for this so I like to put my finger in, I mostly use my thumb so I can push the cart in like this so I don't have to put stress on the top edge right here. And there you go. That is now a double sleeved cart. Now, while this one would be perfect for most cases, one thing to note, the perfect fit sleeves are of course still open down here, the inner sleeves. So I wouldn't really trust these if water were to spill on them. So what I use, as I've said, I use these resealable sleeves. Now, the process is essentially the same. It's just a little more work that you have to do for these sealables, but it's way more secure. Like, you just put in the card just like the, the perfect fit sleeve, and then you take this, this little extra, this little extra bit, you open up the, the sleeve back here a little bit, what I like to do is I like to to kind of wiggle it in, in a way. Like this, put it at the back of the cart. So essentially, the little extra thing wraps around the cart and seals it off at the bottom. That's why it's called sealable, of course. It's a little bit... It's a little bit time-consuming, of course. It takes a little bit more time. But in my opinion, I would take even more time, which when it means my carts are completely protected and as you can see it's protected from all sides basically a perfect fit sleeve you know and also this bottom bit right here is now protected because of the of the sealable ones 
And like, double sleeving is essentially the exact same as for the perfect fit ones. What I've noticed though, these ones are a bit tighter. They make it a bit tighter to, to put the card in an outer sleeve. And that is why I mainly use KMC. Because... In my opinion, these just seem a bit wider than the Dragon Shield ones, which is probably isn't the case, but to me they just feel that way. And then once again, put your thumb in and push the card gently down. And there you go. Another double sleeve card. And this is what I use for my for my main binder. I use these sealables, and then once again, these KMC Perfect Fit ones is what I use for my trade binder. Now, another pair of sleeves that you might be familiar with are these ones, or similar ones. These are usually from an ETB or anything, and while they're perfectly fine to start out and definitely better than not sleeving your card at all, I would highly recommend switching to something else like, as I said, either Dragon Shield or KMC, even Ultra Pro, would be much better and much higher quality than the ones you get for free with your ETB. Now, let's talk about how to protect the graded Pokémon cards, if you have any. And you might think, well, graded Pokémon cards don't need any protection. And you would be right, because, well, this is essentially the safest way to store your Pokémon cards, if you will. To get them encased by PSA, CGC, so on. There are so many grading companies out here. If you do have the money and you want to keep your cards as safe as possible, this is a way that's highly recommended, although it can be quite expensive. But first of all, the case itself, obviously the card doesn't need any protection. It's in a it's in a plastic case. The case itself, though, they can scratch. Now, I highly recommend investing in one of these. These are perfect fit sleeves for PSA graded cards. Um, they also fit CGC or even card by like any of the normal sized graded cards. Um, they don't fit BGS slabs. That's one thing to note, but then BGS slabs, once again, they're like much bigger, much thicker and everything than, than normal slabs. But basically, they are just like any other sleeve that you would put your your cards in, maybe. You just put your, your graded card in like so. And then you flip this over, and then there you go. Now the case is also protected from scratches. Highly recommended. Now, if you don't want to get your cards gridded, then these Ultra Pro One-Touch Magnetic Holders are perfect. Highly recommended for me. And just one thing to note, there is two different versions of these, actually. Well, first of all, um, the 35PT. This one fits Pokemon cards, even with a perfect sleeve. Well, perfectly. And I recommend using these. And this one specifically is a gold magnet, which means... I don't know if you can make that out on the video. This is a gold magnet as opposed to to this one, which is a silver magnet. Um, the golden magnet basically means that these ones are also UV protected. So that means if you have your cards displayed like next to a window where the sun might shine on them, this one will protect them from the, from the UV lights, of course. But these ones, once again, they're very, very highly recommended from me. Like, when I first started getting back into the hobby, this is basically what I used for most of my cards until I got into the graded card market, and it was all downhill from there. And basically what these are, they are resist, if I can show that on video. Oh, there we go, it finally focuses. So they are resist, as you can see, which means the card, once you put the card in like so, it basically sits flush in the case. And then you take the the other side, you put it in down here, and then you basically just let the magnet do the work. And there you go. This is a perfect way to display cards without having them sent to, to a grading company. Once again, highly recommended for me. I really, really like these. Well, I guess that does it for this video. That is how I protect my Pokemon cards. Um, I hope I did get to show you something you maybe didn't know, like some advice. Um, if you do have any questions, though, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, once again, Ultra Pro One Touch, highly recommended. And then <laughs> these ones as well, highly recommended. But anyways, um, thanks you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, then a like would be appreciated. Um, if you didn't enjoy it, then by all means, give it a dislike. Tell me in the comments below what you didn't like so I can try to fix it for future videos. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, 
and Alba will see you in the next one. Peace.